everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi and welcome to the first day of summer. It's June the 22nd and we're finally in summer, yay! Um, today I thought it would be really fun to just show you my five favourite plants in the garden right now and these really do just bring me so much joy and I wanted to share them with you so that, you know, in case you haven't come across these plants before or, you know, you're looking for some inspiration for something for your garden, this might help. If you're new to my channel, I garden here in South Buckinghamshire in the UK in a lovely old walled garden and it's equivalent to a zone 8A in the States and we have heavy clay soil and I just thought I'd cover that right from the start so that you all know where we're starting from. <laughs> I also want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. I've had quite a few new subscribers recently and you know if you fancy seeing more videos like this and you haven't subscribed yet then please do subscribe because that really helps me and don't forget to hit the like button if you're enjoying this video. It's really hard to decide what order to put everything in so let's just say these are my five favourite plants and they aren't in any particular order. <laughs> But the first one that I want to go over today is this wonderful rose behind me. So this is a rose, it's a David Austin rose and it's called Harlow Carr and apparently this rose was released um, to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the RHS, the Royal Horticultural Society here in the UK and it's named after um, a garden near Harrogate in Yorkshire um, called Harlow Carr. But the reason that I love this rose so much, and I'll tell you a bit more about the rose, but the reason I love this rose is because of the scent. The fragrance from this rose, especially first thing in the morning, as the sun hits it in the morning, it's absolutely divine. And I've planted it right outside my kitchen. So when I open the doors in the morning, I'm just greeted with this incredible old rose fragrance. It is so beautiful, I can't tell you. Now I do have three roses planted here. So that's three bush roses and they get to about 90 centimetres by 90 centimetres, which is three foot by three foot. Um, so I've got like a really lovely mound of roses. So Harlokar is repeat flowering, which means it, once it starts flowering in June, it's just going to keep flowering throughout the summer. And one of the great things about this rose is that it has so many flowers. So the flowers start off as this darker pink bud, and then they open up into this almost perfectly shaped rose. It's got loads of petals. Um, there are really Really soft pink and they're just so pretty. I love it even when the roses start to go over and the petals fall to the ground and there's this like really beautiful confetti, pink, pink confetti on the ground. But as I said, the best thing about this rose is the fragrance. I mean, the roses themselves are beautiful. Uh, the one thing I hate about this rose is that it's really thorny. So it's lucky that it's not a climber and it's lucky that it's quite low growing. You're probably not going to brush up against it too much, but you know, obviously it makes pruning just slightly tiresome, <laughs> but it is important to, to prune roses. And I've got loads of videos about pruning roses on my channel if you're interested in finding out how to do that. The Harlokar is a bushy, upright, vigorous growing rose. I find that I've actually planted it, luckily, in a really good spot. So it gets hit by the early morning sun and it releases all its gorgeous fragrance in the morning. And then from midday onwards, it's going to have shade from this wall here. And then obviously it's going to get afternoon sun as the sun travels around the garden. But actually, this particular plant can be planted in full sun or part shade. And on the David Austin website, it says that it's good in east, south or west facing positions. So possibly, you know, not on a north facing wall, it's not going to enjoy being in full shade. Most, most roses are going to prefer to be in sun. I don't want to, you know, just bunch them all together there, but most roses prefer full sun. I do feed my roses at least once a month with a rose food. Um, and I've just done a video about feeding my roses. So you can catch that on my channel if you're interested in what I do and how I do that. Um, but um, I do find that that is really helpful and does keep the flowers coming. I feel really lucky that I chose to plant this particular rose in this spot simply because it greets me with such a wonderful fragrance in the morning. Um, but on the David Austin website, it was listed as best for flowering and best for fragrance. And that's why I chose this rose. So despite the thorns, I feel quite lucky. The other thing that I'm quite lucky about is that um, it's planted in kind of a raised bed here. So I think um, even though the roses are quite short, they only get to, you know, three foot tall, they're actually kind of at, well, just below nose height so 
So that probably helps with, you know, the incredible fragrance. So I would definitely recommend maybe putting it in a raised bed or in a pot or trying to um, raise it up somehow because I think that's probably really helping me enjoy the fragrance throughout the year. Most roses are going to prefer a rich soil. Um, I don't think they particularly mind what kind of soil it is, but having clay soil definitely helps with rose growing, I find. It is more water retentive and roses do enjoy a good watering. And definitely, you know, mulch around your roses, not right up the stem, that's not good for them, but definitely mulch around your roses and um, that would really help them. And, you know, if you can add some really good compost, if you've got poor soil, that's going to help your roses too. So the next plant that I want to talk about is the Philadelphus virginal that I have in my garden. Um, this is also known as a mock orange and so many people who don't know what this plant is will walk past it and be hit with this gorgeous orange blossom fragrance. That's why it's called mock orange. Um, and they'll wonder what the plant is and it's pretty much always going to be a Philadelphus. And you can see that this plant is quite tall. It grows to three meters by two and a half meters. Mine isn't that tall yet. So you could train it along a wall or over a pergola if you wanted to. And it flowers all the way along the stems. So that would definitely work. Um, supposedly you should plant it at the back of a border because it's so tall but actually I've got it planted right here next to my path because that way we get to enjoy the fragrance and in fact one of the branches is just kind of dangling over the path and so every time I walk past I have to move the branch and then I just have this incredible fragrance. It's so beautiful, I can't tell you. It's got these lovely, large, pure white flowers and the bees love it. I do find that with the mock orange that they can sometimes be infested is probably not the right word, but they do get attacked quite a lot by um, aphids as they're just starting to leaf out. So it's deciduous and, you know, the leaves will just turn yellow and then fall off um, in the autumn. But uh, when the when it starts leafing out in the spring the aphids do like to go for it so just stay on top of that and use like a you know soapy dish water or spray them off with a water hose or just squish them with your fingers and then you'll get a wonderful display like this from your mock orange. So I don't think the Philadelphus are particularly fussy about their soil and they are hardy to minus 20 degrees centigrade so they're, they're super hardy here in the UK and I've never had a problem with one. Um, you should prune them after they've finished flowering and the way to do that is to take out I think one in four of the older stems approximately. To be honest with you I don't prune mine every single year and I probably should. It might be sort of a better shape if I pruned it but I quite enjoy the fact that it's um, a less structured shape, it's more floppy, I get these lovely arching stems and um, I just get to enjoy the fragrance that way. So whilst also being a magnet for bees, not as much as the next plant that I'm going to show you but um, the bees do like this particular plant. It's also really good in like an urban environment, it can put up with pollution, it can put up with salty um, air from seawater so you could kind of plant this um, pretty much in so many places actually I think it's a really good all-rounder for a garden and you will not regret it because it smells incredible and the flowers are so pretty. So the next plant that I want to talk to you about is this gorgeous Dutzia behind me. This one is called Pride of Rochester. Best thing about this Dutzia is that it's absolutely festooned in loads of fluffy white flowers that the bees adore. Certainly in my garden it is completely always buzzing with bees. It's actually called the fuzzy dutzia because of the way the flowers are formed I suppose. So this plant is going to get to three meters by two and a half meters tall if you let it but it does respond really well to hard pruning so um, I tend to prune this one quite hard every year because it's right up against our glass corridor so I like to chop it back but it is really fast growing so it's not a problem to cut it back it's just going to bounce back. It does really well in full sun or part shade or I think even in full shade and to be honest with you um, whilst it's in sun at the moment it does get shade all morning here in my garden and then it's shaded by the trees in the late afternoon and it's just doing incredibly well. This plant's been growing here for ages and I've never had a problem with it. It doesn't seem to be prone to any diseases or bugs. It just comes back every year. I would highly recommend this plant, especially if you want to attract 
intract, especially if you want to attract um, insects and particularly bees. The bees seem to love it. Now, it's supposed to have a honey scent, but I have never been able to distinguish. I've never been able to smell anything. It literally appears to be uh, scentless to me, um, but the bees can clearly smell something. So there must be some sort of fragrance um, because it's not particularly colourful. So I don't think the bees are attracted to that at all. Now what I have got um, is these little uh, rusty cupped stakes underneath the Deutzia. Blossom falls into the water in these cups, it just looks so pretty. Deutzias are deciduous so they're going to lose their leaves in the autumn. I've never noticed it turning any particularly wonderful shade um, and because it grows so tall and because it doesn't mind shade and because it doesn't particularly have an aroma actually I think it is quite a good plant for the back of a border. This part of the plant gets quite close to the front of the border because it leans over it's got these really arching stems. So Deutzias are really easy to propagate from cuttings. Um, I've never tried it but actually I think I will try that this year because I'd love to have more of these gorgeous plants throughout my garden. I'm sitting here next to one of my other favourite plants in the garden at the moment and this is also a favourite throughout the summer months. This plant is called Nemesia Wisley Vanilla. I nearly forgot the name and I'm talking about this little plant here. So it grows to about 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres which is I think like a foot by a foot um, but as you can probably tell from the name the best thing about this plant if you haven't come across it before is that the fragrance is pure vanilla and it's not just like a little fragrance it's a really strong fragrance you can smell it from miles away you just get these wafts of vanilla if you like vanilla this is the plant for you if you like the smell of cookies this is the plant for you if you like the smell of cakes baking get this plant <laughs> it's absolutely incredible it's got these tiny little white flowers and they are touched with just the faintest tinge of pale pink and then it's got these like little yellow eyes in the center. I plant this all over my patio because then when we sit out on a summer's evening we can enjoy the fragrance. Um, literally as you walk past the plant you're just enveloped, 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 enveloped. You're enveloped in this wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Now um, whilst this is a perennial it's really grown as an annual so um, it's not necessarily going to withstand the rigours of winter for you. But having said that, I have definitely had Nemesia um, Wisley Vanilla go through the winter for me in the past. They didn't make it through this winter, but we had an extraordinarily cold spell. So I lost all my plants this winter. It got down to minus seven centigrade. So um, I definitely don't think it can withstand that. But if you've got a greenhouse, you could overwinter them in there. But Nemesias are essentially grown as annuals. They're very short lived perennials. If you try to keep them, um, you can. I think it's really pretty. And I've actually planted it right next to my chocolate mint. And um, this, is, this is an aside, it's not one of the plants I was going to cover, but if you like um, after eights or any minty chocolate, then try and find yourself some chocolate mint because that's exactly what this mint smells and tastes like, is it just smells and tastes like minty chocolates and yeah, delicious. <laughs> but um, that's my chocolate mint there. So I do sometimes deadhead the Nemesia but it's not something I do regularly. I find that it's just going to keep flowering whether you deadhead it or not. If you pinch out the stems when your plants um, quite young then it's definitely going to bush out more for you. I'm standing over here in the shade because it's actually getting quite hot but the next plant that I want to talk about is this incredible penstemon behind me. It is a shining blue penstemon and it's called heavenly blue. Now penstemons just create these wonderful mounds of colour throughout the season. They really do bloom from a really early stage like really 
um, I'd say mid spring right the way through until the frosts. They're fully hardy here in the UK. They go down to minus 10 degrees and I've never, I don't think I've lost a penstone <laughs> um, to a frost. Uh, this one certainly came through the freezing cold weather we had this year when it got down to minus seven, which it should because it's hardy to minus 10. Um, but the best thing about the penstemon is the color. So it is mostly blue, predominantly blue, but it is also in amongst the blue, there are these shades of lilac and mauve and pink, and it almost looks electric. Um, and it just kind of sings out and it just catches your eye. Um, and when you get up to it close, it's just fascinating. Now, penstemons are so such easy growing plants. Uh, this one is going to get to about two foot, so 60 centimeters. I think I've got three in this mound over here. I tend to plant in threes or fives, um, and I think this was a mound of three. Um, so they'll get to sort of 60 high and 50 wide. Uh, so about two foot by two foot, something like that. And they, are really disease and pest resistant. Uh, the rabbits don't seem to eat them, the deer didn't seem to eat them when we didn't have a deer fence and I've never really had a problem with any bugs or anything like that. Um, they don't seem to mind what soil they're planted in. I've got them all over the place in my garden and you know this one is planted in Actually, this one's probably planted in quite good soil because there used to be trees over there. So it's probably quite woodlandy soil, but it's in full sun all day long and it tolerates that without any, you know, much additional watering. We don't water the front garden that often. Apparently, if you plant it in poor soils, you're going to get a deeper, richer blue colour than if it's planted in... Um, rich soils and actually I think my soil is quite rich and the colour is definitely you know very deep blue so I'm not having a problem with it being faint or faded at all and you know looking online at this particular plant there seems to be a really large huge variety um, in the colours on the pictures um, online and so I want to give you lots of really good close-ups today so you can see how wonderful it is and this is actually the colour that I've got this year and well every year I don't know why I said this year. So as a little bonus and because I'm just finding it so hard to choose my five favourite plants I probably should have done a list of 10 or 20 but as a little bonus I just wanted to also mention a new plant for me which is called Zenobia pulverulenta blue sky. I don't know whether I've said pulverulenta correctly but anyway it's Zenobia blue sky. Um, it's also called honeycup, I think, um, and that is probably to do with the flowers. So the reason this Zenobia is called Blue Sky is because it's an improved version of Zenobia um, where the young leaves have got this sort of silvery blue tinge to them and then the branches are festooned at this time of year um, in early summer, uh, late spring, early summer, kind of May and due time, June time, why can't I talk properly, <laughs> with um, these gorgeous pure white cups or bells. Um, they're like lily of the valley shaped flowers, um, but just larger, they're much larger. So they're like really eye-catching and intriguing and the plant has these gorgeous arched stems. So it just really grabs your attention. So this Zenobia is only going to get to about two meters tall by one and a half meters wide. So that's like six and a half foot by five foot. Um, so it would do really well, you know, at the front of a border or just like as a statement piece in the middle of a lawn or in a pot on your patio. And the reason I mention pots specifically is because um, whilst this plant is particularly problem free, it does prefer acid soil. Now I don't have acid soil in my garden and I have planted it in the bed, but don't do as I do, do as I say. And it's best to check um, what the pH of your soil is first before you plant it, or plant it in a pot on your patio with ericaceous compost. If you don't have acidic soil um, in your beds and you want to plant it in a bed or in the lawn, then you can definitely amend your soil by adding sulfur to it. Uh, there are various other methods actually, and it's probably best to you know look up in a guide how to do that and definitely check your soil pH before you start putting any amendments in whatsoever. Um, but this plant, 
is um, just going to look glorious as a statement piece with these arching stems with the delicate bells um, hanging down. Zenobias prefer full sun um, or if your soil is going to dry it in the summer then put them in part shade. I definitely recommend that because they won't enjoy the soil drying out too much. So this Zenobia is a semi evergreen shrub so it should keep most of its leaves in the winter but it will lose some. Depends how harsh the winter is I suppose but I just really not only do I love the flowers but I really love this silvery foliage and I think it looks perfect in this corner here. I've got some Clarkia um, planted um, very close to it at the moment. Clarkia is just going to be an annual and I'm really enjoying the corally colour against the Zenobia so I think yeah, it's looking really pretty and this is just a little bonus plant because I just didn't want to miss it out. So I really hope that you've enjoyed having a little mini tour of the garden with me today and looking at my favourite plants at the moment. I know that I said there'd be five but I did actually give you a bonus and you've now you now have six of my favourite plants in the garden at the moment. If you've enjoyed this video then please do subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing loads more videos in the future and there are lots of videos on my channel already if you want to take a look and see whether any of them spark some interest. Um, and do if you've enjoyed this video then give it a like as well because that really helps me and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.